latest developments in the ANC in the Northwest Province uh, that has seen uh, Premier Job Mohoro and four others suspended. And um, they, of course, are fighting for their political survival in that province. We joined by Dr. Oshuping Maseng, who's a lecturer in political science and international relations at uh, the University of the Northwest. Uh, prof uh, doctor, thanks so much for your time and thanks for staying with us. Now, I, I wanted to come to these reports that we spoke about previously uh, talking about this rampant fraud and corruption. And uh, th those reports, of course, include uh, the provincial SCOPA report that actually showed that even during Section 100, uh, corruption seems to continue unabated in the Northwest province. So why has there been no consequence management uh, despite all these billions that were lost to corruption and that has led to a breakdown in service delivery. You don't have to ask about that. It's evident everywhere. And uh, this is why the province was placed under administration to begin with. Uh, where's the consequence management? You see, one thing that we must clearly understand is that uh, I tend to, to have personally a view that we, we consistently blame politicians for issues of uh, corruption and uh, irregularities in the public sector. The point of departure when you have to actually look at corruption and issues of mismanagement in government is to look at the public servants themselves, that we do have senior public servants, for instance, in the form of uh, head of departments, that these head of departments are actually regarded as accounting officers, legislative accounting officers of departments. Now, there's no consequence management towards them. It's not only about poli uh, politicians themselves. We have to consider the fact that much as politicians might be involved to a certain extent, politicians are there to provide a, a, a policy guidance as well as legislative, legislative guidance, whereas we have accounting officers that are actually charged with managing and running these various departments. Now, consequence management is not there because you tend to have a lot of HODs, a lot of uh, uh, administrators coming in and out, whereas there are a lot of bad things that happen under their watch and they are left unabated. Now, we actually have to start looking into this senior public servants to, to check as to whether what is it that can be done to ensure that we kept corruption. But the focus is clearly on politicians alone with disregarding those that are actually accounting officers or are actually to have to be held accountable as well to these mismanagement processes within government. And in terms of broader oversight, how have national departments that are supposed to oversee the administration process actually assisted? How have they helped in the process of lifting the province out of the doldrums and out of that Section 100 situation? Truly speaking, I, I don't see national departments doing anything. Because it's not for the first time way in which you see uh, uh, the province being placed under administration. We have, we have also experienced a situation whereby municipalities in the province were placed under administration. But consistently, you don't actually see any evolution from regressive to progressive movement within government in terms of service delivery and actually caving corruption. You consistently have these administrators coming in, but you fail to actually see or feel the impact of what is it that they are channeling that is positive in these various departments. So the province is still standing as it is because national government is actually would, would actually place the provincial government under administration. But when you have to come to now, what are these key performance indicators to actually clearly define what is the progress that we have made in terms of your intervention? There's nothing that can be shown. So uh, just uh, to wrap it with regard to the situation in the Northwest province right now, uh, Professor Job Mohoro and the four other suspended members, and of course they are making the argument that they are still members of the party. Uh, so uh, just as we wrap this up, if the suspended members actually disregarded a party position, how serious a breach is that? Uh, on, on the matter of principle is a serious breach because ordinarily the ANC would clearly tell you that when you are deployed by the ANC, you actually have to take cue and instruction as well as abide by the decisions as well as the resolution of the ANC. Anything that is anti-ANC resolution is tantamount to a serious disciplinary measure. But I think what should happen now in order to maintain stability of the province is that there should or there is a need for national leadership to actually intervene. Because you cannot consistently having a situation whereby there are squabbles between members of the ANC who are actually at senior leadership level. Whereas we have a national leadership that has to take charge and intervene to see what is it that uh, to see what is it that can be done in order to resolve these problems and actually 
uh, uh, take the province back to normalcy and an element of stability should be there. Now, there is a need for national leadership to intervene because until such time, you will consistently have uh, those that are deployed in government consistently disregarding decisions of the ANC, which on its own would uh, further uh, exacerbate this political instability that we are experiencing in this province. Dr. Oshipeng Maseng, thanks so much for your time this morning. Uh, Dr. Maseng is from the Northwest University discussing challenges faced by the Northwest Provincial Government that have led to service delivery breakdowns. And this as the ANC continues to be engrossed in internal fighting within that province. Let's take a break.